Hello everyone. This is the pre-market report video for today, 14 September 2023 in the new stock market in terms of Nifty and Bank Nifty. Yesterday, our Indian market was really very dramatic. I mean, on Tuesday, there was a huge profit booking in almost all the mid cap and small cap before the inflation data release. However, the India's consumer inflation was not as bad as it was expected. In fact, it was very good as there was a huge decline of over 9% in the food inflation. Here, as per RBI for the whole country, this is how much the vegetable price changed by month on month basis and year on year basis. If required, please pause and have a look. Mainly, tomato price increased over 180% compared to last year, but compared to July month, it dropped 22%. Now, as per Deutsche Bank, if the food inflation dropped another 2.5% month-on-month basis, then this will push the consumer inflation into just 5% in the upcoming September month. Here, 5% inflation in September is the huge deal since that's below the RBI's 6% target. And also same report, Deutsche Bank mentioned that they are not seeing any reason for RBI to increase the interest rate till April. So as of now, India's inflation data, it's very, very good. And earlier, investors were really nervous that it may reach near 8% kind of. Now, that's out of the card, made the investors split into two. One side, super bullish following the trend and another side, no, no, the valuation is crazy. And that's why both small cap and mid cap swings between 1% negative and 1% positive yesterday. Anyway, in the end, both of them closed on the positive side. Now let's move to the large cap side, I mean Nifty. We know and we discussed in detail in the last three pre-market videos that how RBI is planning to remove the incremental CRR by October 7th, etc. under all. That's itself fundamentally a positive. On top of that, yesterday during the market time, as a part of banking regulation framework update, RBI removed the cap that how much and any bank can invest in the held to maturity bonds. I mean, predominantly, this held to maturity bonds belongs to government. Basically, how much a bank can lend to government for their any infrastructure development, etc. As per earlier framework, they can do this up to only 19.5% of their deposit. Here, this doesn't make sense to me at all. So far, RBI prevented or limited the banks that how much they can lend it to government for the development. This is complete madness, isn't it? For Indian rupee, Indian government was the last one that declared bankruptcy than those all the businessmen. So lending it to the government via bonds is one of the easiest and safest things for banks to do. Anyway, that's how it was earlier. Now that cap removed so Indian government can borrow more held to maturity bonds from the Indian banks. Here, this is particularly very positive for government PSU banks since earlier they can't lend it to the government over certain limit. So they lend it to the private players which in turn indeed becomes the NPA. Now this move will reduce the NPA in the government banks. That's why yesterday PSU bank as a sector increased over 4% which in turn made all the financials very attractive, especially the larger banks. Thus, finally, Nifty closed above 20,000 on the closing basis. I mean, on both Monday and Tuesday, Nifty crossed 20,000, but at the time of closing, both the days dropped and moved below. Finally, on the third attempt yesterday on closing basis, Nifty closed above 20,000. Only IT and auto closed negative in the major sector. Other than that, all closed positive. Then about advanced second ratio, it improved massively from just 0.23 to near 1.5, which means yesterday over 50% more number of stocks advanced than that of the number of stocks that declined. Coming to institution activities, even yesterday, FIA was net sellers. The net sold for 1,630 crore rupees. So in this month alone, FII net sold for over 10,000 crore rupees. However, DI supported to some extent, the net bought for approximately 850 crore rupees. So that's what happened in Indian market yesterday. Moving to US, before their market opening, US Bureau of Labor Statistics released the US consumer inflation data for the August month. 
on the face of it on year on year basis it increased to 3.7% in august compared to 3.2% in july but if we take out the fuel and food then core consumer inflation dropped to 4.3% compared to 4.7% a month ago. Here, this 4.3% is the lowest value in the last 22 months, which indeed made all the three US major index to be positive and traded positive for most of the day. However, during closing, it trimmed some of its gain. Dow Jones closed negative of 0.2%, S&P Finder increased 0.12%, while Nasdaq was up by 0.29%. In case of VIX, it decreased over 5% from above 14.2 and moved below 13.5. Then, in case of oil, it's roughly same as Tuesday. At this time of this video, Brent crude oil trading at 92 US dollars per barrel, while WT crude oil traded at 89 US dollars per barrel. Regarding Indian ADRs, except Wipro, all closed marginally negative. I think ADR just realigned with the Indian market. Since in the last four days, despite the raise or decrease in Indian market, in ADR, it's mostly positive and mainly banks. Now, I think some investors might benefit this as arbitrage with the Indian market. Anyway, Gift Nifty at the early morning, it closed at 20,146. It's kind of indicating flat to positive opening. So that's what happened in global market yesterday. Now let's see some Indian sector and stock specific info. First, yesterday, again, auto sector closed to negative because there was a talk that Indian government going to make a mandatory six airbags in the passenger cars from October onwards. But transport ministry cleared that there is no proposal for that at present. So I hope at least now the auto sector will turn positive. Let's see. Then the second important, there is a new thread in Kerala regarding the Nepa virus. So keep an eye out for this as well. Third, about Reliance, there was a private report that Reliance is planning to raise as much as near 3.5 billion US dollars by end of September at the valuation of 100 billion US dollars for Reliance retail. Generally, this is positive news, but for some reason, Reliance GDR closed 0.5% negative. Not sure about the reason. Finally, as per stock open interest analysis, Indus Tower, Titan, ONGC and Glenmark got the long build-up, whereas REC, India Hotel, Bata India, Jubilee Food and HTFC Life all got the short build-up. So as a summary, US market is more of flat to positive and most of the ADR closed negative and Gift Nifty is indicating flat to positive opening as well. So then the remaining question will be, how far Bank Nifty will increase and support Nifty in turn? Regarding the things to look out, first around 12, wholesale inflation is due. Especially market will be focusing on mainly the food inflation. Since I said a lot of times wholesale inflation is always directly proportional to next month upcoming consumer inflation. Then in the night, Europe's interest rate decision, US retail sales data and weekly jobs data all are scheduled to release. Coming to technical, Nifty opened on a flat note and traded with a positive bias for throughout the day and finally closed around 70 points positive. Thus, on the daily charts, it forms the medium green candle with small upper and lower shadow. Here, this candle is smaller than previous day one. So it means Nifty consolidated within the range 20,110 to 19,914 of the previous trading session. Again, the daily and hourly momentum indicators are showing divergent signals and hence we can expect more consolidation in the near term. During this consolidation, we can expect sector rotation and stock specific moves. However, there is no confirmation of any top reversal pattern forming at the new high value. A decisive up move above 20,100 to 20,150 levels is expected to bring more upside towards 20,350 to 20,450. So overall, the short term outlook is positive and this consolidation is likely to be used as a buying opportunity. In terms of levels 19,865 to 19,810, is the crucial support zone while 20,200 to 20,250 shall act as an immediate hurdle zone. Then moving to the bank nifty, it was the star performer yesterday as it managed to breach the previous day high of 45,894 and closed above. 
Thus, it forms a bullish engulfing candlestick pattern. This pattern signifies a potential reversal of the previous bearish sentiment. And this indicating that it has started next leg of up move. On the upside, it has the potential to retest the swing high of 46,370 and above that 46,500. Daily and hourly momentum indicators has a positive crossover which is a buy signal. Then as per open interest analysis, the maximum weekly call option open interest was seen at 20,100 strike followed by 20,200 and 20,500. Thus indicating that 20,100 to 20,500 is expected to be resistance area. While the maximum put option open interest was at 19,900 strike followed by 20,000 strike. Thus 19,900 strike indicates the strong support. So that's all in this video. Hope you all got some useful information. Please consider subscribing the channel and liking the video so it will help me beat the YouTube algorithm and will also motivate me to do more. Please don't make any investigation based on this as I am not a SEBI registered advisor. I am doing this for my and viewers educational purpose only. Thanks for watching.